Hi, I'm Mark Dever, pastor of Capitol Hill Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. I'm here at the G3 Conference in Atlanta, and my friend Pat Daly, who runs <laughs> Banner of Truth here in the States, uh, just noticed I was ooing and eyeing over some of the Banner books to friends who were with me, so I thought I would just share that with some of you. If you haven't read Ian Murray's biography of Jonathan Edwards, it's great. I remember asking Mark Knoll one time what he thought of Ian's biography, and he said, well, you know, George Marsden's has just come out, and he said, I'm pretty sure that Jonathan Edwards would like to hear the best. I think he's probably right about that. Uh, a classic that they keep in print is Arnold Dalmore's two volumes of George Whitfield, which I would encourage you to read. Uh, Ian also has a recent one on J.C. Ryle, which is great. You know, Ryle had a fairly hard life. Uh, he predeceased, uh, or rather, he was predeceased by two or maybe three of his wives. His son ends up going into the ministry to disagree with him theologically, and yet Ryle stood firm to the end. And Ian recounts it well here. And speaking of standing firm to the end, uh, Ian also did a biography a few years ago of John MacArthur, which is a great uh, contemporary piece on uh, a champion of God's Word today. One that I read recently, it's been out for a while, but that you might not think to get is this Scottish Christian heritage. You might think, well, I'm not Scottish, or I don't live in Scotland, so why read this book? Listen, I read the whole thing. I was familiar with most of the guys in the book, but not all of them. But in every single one, these are separate essays that he's written over the years, he, as he typically does, brings out good lessons for Christians in all places and all times. So it's kind of a two for you. Not only get an encouraging short biography, you give them seven or eight of them in the book, but you get really important true lessons about gospel ministry in the local church. I mean, even reflections as contemporary as what do we think of sort of pan-evangelical ministries like Billy Graham. Uh, as he's looking at some earlier pan evangelical D.L. Moody kind of evangelistic mission. So, really helpful book that you might not think of a Scottish Christian heritage. If you've never read The Memoir and Remains of Robert Murray McShane, you have one of the, the treasures of the Christian faith in front of you. What else could I tell you about here in the riches? Uh, certainly, if you've never seen this book, this is one of the best books next to the Bible you're going to find. These are slightly edited prayers from the 17th century uh, on one or two page lengths each. When I use it in my quiet time, I'll like lay a card over the whole page and I'll pull down line at a time and just meditate briefly. They're wonderful. Mm. Um, oops, sorry about that. All good. Um, Ian's biography of John Wesley is good. You might not think of Wesley, if you read Banner Truth Books, as somebody you want to learn much from. There's a lot you can learn. And Ian, in his typically humble fashion, goes and, and learns it. Uh, wow, other good things. John Pedro, always worth reading about. Maybe forgotten by some people today, but truly one of the great pioneer missionaries. His autobiography is maybe the best missionary biography or autobiography I've ever read. Uh, from working with the poor in Glasgow or early in his ministry, to taking the gospel to islands where they literally ate the people, uh, including some people he knew. Uh, this is a, a riveting example of a man who faithfully worked, gave his life to see local churches established. And this is the fun thing about Banner Fruit, you can just keep going and grab almost anything. Um, the John Calvin sermons that are printed are excellent and helpful. I was just reading some of them on Deuteronomy. I do wish you guys would do that in something other than facsimile but I'm used to reading that kind of print. Uh, Calvin's letters are really good. Uh, they're short, they're easy stuff to read, and you get a sense of the man that you don't sometimes with biographies. Okay, now we're in the third paperback <laughs> series, so these are like the great books of Christianity. We're full of Christian contentment. Uh, another, sorry to keep using superlatives, but The Mystery of Providence by John Flavel. If you've never read this, uh, Flavel does a wonderful job of helping you to meditate on how God's sovereign kindness is seen, even in the strangest circumstances. He was a pastor for years in the south of England, uh, knew suffering himself, faithful. Speaking of suffering, he also wrote this little book on facing grief. Uh, where if, if you suffered the loss of a child, a close relative, or a friend, uh, this could be a helpful book for you to meditate on. These sermons that Edmund Cowley put together uh, about the Great Ejection yeah. in 1662 are powerful sermons. These are pastors who are choosing to be on the last day of their ministry because they can't, in good conscience, affirm everything in the Book of Common Prayer, resign their jobs, lose their livings generally had to move away from where they were to be faithful. These are their final sermons to the congregation. Moving. Uh, 
so I would strongly encourage you to get that. If you're the kind of person who's never read a book on church history, this should be your first one. S.M. Houghton's sketch from church history. Uh, it's clear, it goes through everything, he picks up edifying accounts, it's reliable, uh, it's, it's illustrated. <laughs> Look at that, a banner of truth book illustrated. Yeah, it's true, everything's black and white, 300 years old, but still, it's illustrated. So you might want to think of using that. Oh, fun new children's books. About like, even, even Luke Jones. Well, well bestseller after the Bible. Yeah. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress. What a, what a wonderful book to read. And, uh... I guess we'll leave it here. Yeah, I hope good. you enjoy Banner of Truth books and our edifying Bible.